Hi everyone, and welcome back. Over the past couple of weeks, we've spent a lot of time talking about polynomial approximations. We've learned how to find Taylor polynomials for a given function, we've studied shortcuts for computing such polynomials, and most recently, we've learned some methods for estimating the error in our approximation. But now it's time to put all that theory to use. In this lesson, we're going to see how to use Taylor polynomials to approximate integrals that we can't compute using the fundamental theorem of calculus. To start things off, consider the following very famous example, the function e to the x squared. Now suppose we want to know the integral of this function from x equals 0 to x equals 1. You could try to compute this by finding an antiderivative of e to the x squared, but you're going to have a hard time. e to the x squared doesn't have a nice elementary antiderivative, so we can't compute this integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Instead, we're going to look for a way to estimate it. One way that we could do this is by integrating a function that's very close to e to the x squared, but whose antiderivative we can actually compute. Well, we know how to find antiderivatives of polynomials, right? So maybe we could approximate e to the x squared by one of its Taylor polynomials. Since we're interested in the values of this function near x equals 0, maybe it makes the most sense to center our polynomial at 0. That is, we'll consider one of its Maclaurin polynomials. The easiest way to get a Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x squared would be to start with the simpler expression e to the u. I'll let you check as an exercise that the quadratic Maclaurin polynomial of this function is given by 1 plus u plus u squared over 2. Here I've chosen a quadratic arbitrarily. I just need something for the time being to estimate this integral. Of course, we also have a remainder term, which I'll denote by r2 of u. Now, since we're interested in the function e to the x squared, our next step would be to make the substitution u equals x squared. I'm going to replace all the u's on the right-hand side with x squared. We get a Maclaurin polynomial of this function given by 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4 over 2. And of course, I have to make the same replacement of u with x squared in my remainder term. That gives me a remainder of r2 of x squared. Our next job will be to integrate this expression from x equals 0 to x equals 1. But what do we do about this remainder term? Maybe your gut tells you just discard it. After all, e to the x squared should be pretty close to this polynomial. Well, that's one option, but it's probably not a great choice. Because if we throw out the remainder term, we have no way of knowing how close our integral approximation is to the true value of this integral. So rather than throwing out the remainder, we'll incorporate it into our calculation. Let's start by looking at the remainder term for e to the u. According to Taylor's inequality, the absolute value of this remainder is bounded above by a constant k times the absolute value of u minus 0 cubed, since we're looking at a quadratic approximation, divided by 3 factorial. Here, k denotes an upper bound for our third derivative for u values between 0 and 1. Oh, but hold on a second. Our third derivative is still e to the u, right? So when u is between 0 and 1, our third derivative is bounded above by e. As a result, my remainder is always less than or equal to e times the absolute value of u cubed divided by 3 factorial. Now, e is kind of a gross number to work with, so I'm going to go ahead and round it up to 3. You can always round up when making these error estimates. This is going to be less than or equal to, okay, 3 over 3 factorial. That's going to be 1 over 2, so absolute value of u cubed over 2. Okay, cool. We have an upper bound for this remainder. But what about the remainder for e to the x squared? Well, to go from this remainder to this remainder, we need to replace u with x squared. And if I do that, I find that the absolute value of r2 of x squared is going to be bounded above by x to the 6 divided by 2. Okay, now we're in business. We know that our function is equal to this fourth degree polynomial plus some error term, where the error in magnitude is no more than x to the 6 divided by 2. This means that for all x values between 0 and 1, where we've made our error approximation, e to the x squared is always sandwiched between two other functions. It's always bigger than what you would get if you subtracted this maximum error term. It's always bigger than 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4 over 2 minus x to the 6 over 2. 
and it's always smaller than what you would get by adding this maximum error term. It's always smaller than 1 plus x squared plus x to the 4 over 2 plus x to the 6 over 2. Knowing that this function is always squished between these two polynomials will allow us to get some nice bounds on the value of this integral. Let me show you how on the next slide. Okay, so using what we know about Taylor polynomials, we were able to show that on the interval 0, 1, e to the x squared is always squished between these two polynomial curves. Graphically, it might look something like this. e to the x squared is shown here in green, the lower polynomial curve is shown here in blue, and the upper polynomial curve is shown here in red. Over the interval 0, 1, the green curve is always stuck between the blue curve and the red curve. Now we're interested in understanding the value of this integral, right? Which we interpret as the area beneath this curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1. How does this area compare with the area, say, under the blue curve or under the red curve? Well, you can see if the blue curve is underneath the green curve, then it encloses a little bit less area than the green curve does, right? The integral from 0 to 1 of the lower bound is going to be less than or equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the function we're actually interested in. Similarly, the red curve is going to enclose a little bit more area than the green curve. So the integral of this function is a little bit more than the integral of our function. Oh, now would you look at this? We found two integrals that we can actually compute that sandwich the integral that we're interested in. By evaluating this expression on the left and this expression on the right, we get a range of possible values for the integral in the middle. On the next slide, we'll take a closer look at these bounds and try to identify the maximum error in our approximation. On the previous slide, we showed that the integral we're trying to compute is bounded between two much nicer integrals. If I evaluate these integrals, I'll get a range of possible values for the integral in the middle. Rather than computing the entire integral directly, however, I'm going to start by separating out the error term that we found earlier in our calculation. In this example, x to the 6 over 2 was the upper bound on our error. So you can see I've split up my lower bound into the integral of my Maclaurin polynomial minus the integral of my error, and I've done the same with my upper bound. I have the integral of my Maclaurin polynomial plus the integral of my error. Now we evaluate. I'll let you check that if you evaluate these two Maclaurin polynomial integrals, you'll get a value of 43 over 30. What about the error term? Well, this is also not too hard to compute. You should get 1 over 14. Oh, but now take a look at what we've just shown. This calculation tells me that the integral I'm trying to find is equal to 43 over 30 plus or minus an error term of 1 over 14. So by separating out that error, not only do we get an approximation for our integral, but we get a range of possible values on the error. Maybe this was expected, but the error that we get in approximating this integral turned out to be the integral of our original error term x to the 6 over 2. So what we conclude is that the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x squared dx sits somewhere between 43 over 30 minus 1 over 14, which, rounding down, is approximately 1.361, and 43 over 30 plus 1 over 14, which is approximately 1.505. Now, according to Maple, the value of this integral is roughly 1.463, so sure enough, we do land in the correct interval. If you were hoping to get a sharper approximation than the one that we found, try repeating the calculation with a higher degree Maclaurin polynomial. Usually, by increasing the degree, your approximation will get better.